in case there was an asteroid coming towards Earth and you're there, you can actually stop it. I mean, that's kind of fantastic. NASA is crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid. What? You think science fiction, but this is real. Never in my life would I have thought I would take a couple hundred million dollar spacecraft and crash it into an asteroid. <laughs> Good evening. It's Tuesday, November 23rd, and on your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 10.21 p.m. Pacific time launch from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base. My name is Jesse Anderson. I'm a production and engineering manager on Falcon 9 here at SpaceX. Welcome to our webcast coverage for the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART mission, managed by NASA's Launch Services Program. If you ever saw the movie Armageddon or played asteroids as a kid, this mission is for you. DART is SpaceX's first interplanetary launch for NASA and the first planetary defense test to see if humanity can change the motion of an asteroid in space or stop it altogether. Together. As part of NASA's larger planetary defense strategy, the DART mission will prove that a spacecraft can autonomously navigate to a target asteroid and intentionally collide with it, a method of asteroid deflection known as kinetic impact. The target asteroid, which poses no threat to Earth, is the asteroid moonlet Dimorphos, which orbits a larger asteroid named Didymos. If all goes as planned, DART will direct itself to impact Dimorphos at roughly 15,000 miles per hour or 4 miles per second, which is 6 kilometers per second, just under a year from now, somewhere between September 26 and October 1st of 2022. Scientists will use telescopic observations of the asteroids, images taken by an onboard camera, images of the DART impact event collected by an Italian space agency CubeSat, and data collected later by the European Space Agency's HERA mission to build a more accurate model and better prepare us to successfully defend the planet should a future asteroid impact threat ever be discovered. The DART mission is an awesome example of science fiction becoming reality, and the SpaceX team couldn't be more excited to be launching this payload to space. Today marks the 26th mission for SpaceX this year and 128th flight of a Falcon 9 vehicle overall. Liftoff of Falcon 9 will kick kick off a roughly 11-month journey for the DART payload. The DART spacecraft will separate right around 56 minutes into flight, and from there it will spend the next 11 months cruising to its intended destination, intercepting the binary asteroid system between late September and early October of 2022. DART's target asteroid is the size of two football fields. Impact will occur when the distance between Earth and the asteroids is near its minimum, within 6.8 million miles or 11 million kilometers of Earth. This will enable scientists to observe and measure the change in momentum of the Dimorphos asteroid. And it's worth noting that Dimorphos is not a threat to Earth. Therefore, it's a perfect testing ground to see if intentionally crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid is an effective way to change its course should an Earth-threatening asteroid be discovered in the future. Now, the DART demonstration has been carefully designed with four key objectives. The first objective is to demonstrate a kinetic impact with Dimorphos, the smaller the two asteroids. DART will hit the asteroid nearly head-on delivering enough energy to leave an impact crater, but not enough to destroy the asteroid, eject it from its orbit around that larger asteroid, or noticeably change the pair's orbit about the sun. Now the second objective is to change the binary orbital period of Dimorphos. Now the orbital period is the time it takes the smaller asteroid to circle the larger asteroid you can see here in the graphic. Currently, Dimorphos is in that original orbit. Scientists estimate the collision will shorten the smaller asteroid's orbital period by several minutes, placing it into that new blue orbit. Now the third objective is to use ground-based telescope observations to measure the orbital period change before and after the impact. Telescopic observations in the weeks after impact will confirm that DART changed that orbital period of Dimorphos and it'll reveal by how much. And then finally, the fourth objective is to measure the effects of the impact and the efficiency of that deflection. Now choosing this binary asteroid target for the demonstration takes advantage of the fact that changes in that smaller asteroid's orbit around its larger partner can be more easily measured than the changes in a single asteroid's orbit around the sun. 
To ensure the best possible data capture, the DART mission is taking along some pretty cool technologies to help capture this demonstration test. On board the spacecraft is the Didymos Re Reconnaissance and Asteroid Camera for Optical Navigation, also known as DRACO. Now, this is not to be confused with the DRACO thrusters on SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. DART's DRACO will provide real-time streaming images of, asteroid, of the asteroid as it approaches impact. In addition to the onboard camera, the team is also flying a CubeSat from the Italian space agency known as Licia Cube, which stands for Light Italian CubeSat for Imaging of Asteroids. This cube will be deployed from the DART spacecraft 10 days prior to impact with, with the asteroid. Licia Cube will use its onboard propulsion system to alter its trajectory, offsetting so that it flies past Dimorphos approximately three minutes after the DART impact to capture the effects of the impact. Now, it's pretty incredible to think about what a mission like this could mean for the future of planetary defense. Now let's take a closer look at what the NASA team is hoping to achieve with the double asteroid redirection test mission. The DART mission is NASA's first test of a planetary defense technique called Kinetic Impactor. DART is the double asteroid redirection test. It's just a spacecraft that is going to go and smack an asteroid. The moon lift Dimorphos, which orbits the asteroid Didymos. And see if we can change its trajectory just a little bit. In order to show that we can deflect incoming asteroids if we need to. DART will only be changing the period of the orbit of Dimorphos by a, a tiny amount. But in space, just a little bit is just enough to make an asteroid actually miss us. In the event that an asteroid is discovered well ahead of time before it might impact Earth. Behind me, you see the spacecraft. It's really cool to see it coming together in real life. It is fantastic to see it in real life. To see it turn from ideas into real pieces that are gonna go into space. The solar arrays will actually roll out to 28 feet in length. Once the solar arrays are deployed, it's going to be the size of a school bus. As the solar array opens out, it's going to swing out in this direction. The asteroid's only two football fields in size. We're flying at over six kilometers a second. 30 days out, we see one pixel on our field of view. You can see Didymos and Dimorphos is one point of light. About four hours out, our spacecraft becomes autonomous. And then that's where everything gets really exciting. You actually are seeing impact. We're super excited and nervous as well. I feel really honored and humbled to be working in an area of science that has such a broader impact, you know, figuratively and literally. <laughs> so dark. The dinosaurs are uh, made completely extinct by an asteroid impact so many years ago. Here we are, we can actually do something about it. I think this is just wonderful. It's currently T minus four minutes and counting. Everything continues to be go for launch. Spacecraft is transferred to internal Falcon power. Falcon 9's in startup. Just waiting Falcon for Falcon 9, start, go for launch. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. On the way for humanity's first ever planetary defense test mission. Vehicles pitching downrange. Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. T plus 33 seconds. SpaceX launch engineers seeing a nominal conditions on Falcon 9 as we begin the trip to space carrying the DART spacecraft. M1D engines about to begin throttling down. Power and telemetry nominal. We're throttled down. Avionics calls out good power on the vehicle. Vehicle supersonic. Max Q. We've gone supersonic. We're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. And the Maryland 1D engines have throttled back up to full power. We're out of the throttle bucket. From here on, even though the velocity is even though the velocity is rapidly increasing. The atmospheric density is decreasing, and so the loads are decreasing now on the Falcon 9. Two minutes into flight, all continues to go well. In 30 seconds, we'll have three significant events coming up in quick succession. We'll get Miko, main engine cutoff, where we shut down the nine Merlin engines. The stages will separate, and we'll get ignition of the MVAC-D second stage engine to power DART and the second stage into their parking orbit. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Yeah. 
in the ignition. We've got successful stage separation, second stage engine ignition now at full power on the Merlin engine. Next event coming up is going to be payload fairing jettison. On the left side, you can see the titanium grid fins on the first stage beginning to deploy as we get ready to bring the first stage back down to the drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Pacific Ocean. Getting ready now, there's fairing the view separation confirmed. of the fairing. And we've got deployment of the payload fairing and now the DART spacecraft exposed to the vacuum of outer space. Now we will be attempting to retrieve these new fairing halves with the help of our recovery vessel, NRC Quest. Stage two on nominal trajectory. And it looks like we've got a live view on your left hand screen of the first stage. Stage one, FTS is safe. Stage one, entry burn startup. And we heard the call out as well as visual confirmation that the entry burn has begun on the first stage. Again, this is about a 30 second burn and just helps to slow the vehicle down as it's re-entering the denser part of the Earth's atmosphere. So we should see this engine shut off here shortly. And about 20 seconds later, we'll see or hear the landing burn call out on first stage begin. And they shut down. And we just Nominal had- Nominal orbit insertion. That's what we were waiting for. Stage one, landing burn startup. So we got Seco one on second stage. We got a confirmation of good orbit and the landing burn has begun on first stage. And now we have a live view of first stage making its way to, of course, I still love you. Stage one, landing leg deploy. And we had some incredible views. Now we're just waiting for some confirmation of that first stage landing here in a second as we have a live view of second stage currently with the engine cut off as it's coasting towards its targeted uh, orbit. And coming back with some great news, as you can see on your screen, that we didn't get a live view of touchdown. We do confirm a successful stage one landing today. That is the third for this booster, the 25th landing for SpaceX this year, and SpaceX's 88th overall successful recovery of a first stage. The second stage completed its first burn, placing the Falcon 9 and the DART spacecraft in the desired orbit. And right now we are approaching the second engine burn, uh, the, the burn of the second engine to carry Falcon 9. In recognition. And there's that SES-2, as you can see live on your screen, lighting up there. Now this burn is planned to last a little less than one minute. And during that time, we will add about three and a half kilometers per second to our velocity. Now you can see the gauge on the screen showing stage two quickly gaining speed. We'll add about three and a half kilometers per second or about 12,500 kilometers per hour to our velocity. And cutoff should be coming up here shortly. Index shutdown. Now just waiting for confirmation of good Nominal orbit. Nominal escape burn. And there is that confirmation of a nominal escape burn. Jesse called out nominal escape burn. What that means, the Falcon 9 second stage with DART still attached has escaped Earth's velocity. It's now in what's called a heliocentric orbit. It's circling the sun in an orbit that takes it from just inside the Earth's orbit to just outside, where in 10 months, the DART spacecraft and those two asteroids should arrive at the same time. Now the DART spacecraft is still attached to Falcon 9's second stage. There's one more major milestone coming up to complete today's mission, and that is deployment of the DART spacecraft from the Falcon 9 second stage, due to happen in about 10 seconds from now. The view you see from the second stage camera is the DART spacecraft. We're going to listen to hear the call out and watch for DART separation. DART separation confirmed. And to those watching, you're witnessing a successful deployment of the DART spacecraft. The impact of the DART spacecraft with the small asteroid Dimorphos is scheduled to happen sometime between the end of September and early October in 2022, when the double asteroids are closest to the Earth. Now during impact, the spacecraft will be traveling roughly 15,000 miles per hour or four miles per second. This is gonna be an exciting collision to witness and we wish everyone at NASA the best of luck with the rest of the mission.